in 1979, he managed to persuade some financiers in Germany to finance the installation of the corkscrew. I went to ride a corkscrew in Holland. <laughs> They'd only just built it in the, in the factory yard um, at um, Bacoma. Um, it hadn't been painted, so it was all rusty looking uh, rather terrible. Um, and we rode it, and um, the first time I went on it, um, we got to the top and we what the hell I was doing up there before we, we shot off down. And it was quite a thrilling ride for those days. We started work to prepare the site for it um, three days before Christmas. We had Christmas Day off, but we worked on uh, Boxing Day and all the way through um, and got it ready for opening um, just before Easter. We got uh, um, Nationwide, which is a programme on BBC, which actually put us on the map. And they were filming it with the children from the school down in Chile. They we had the dispatch rider waiting to take the film off down to London. Um, which it just got there just in time. So that went out to the whole of the UK and it was absolutely amazing the effect it had on us. We're now being pulled up to the highest point, some 85 feet, and within seconds these cars will be doing 65 miles an hour. Here we go. Right, sir. Don't close your eyes. Why? Keep on the first drop is bad enough and then comes the double corkscrew which twice takes the cars through 360 degrees. But hair raising as it is, most people seem to enjoy it, with reservations. The corkscrew was built by a Dutch company and cost one and a quarter million pounds. But according to the first day customers at least, Alton Towers are on to a winner. On the bank holiday Monday, we had to close the gates because we had that many people trying to get here us to, um, to see this corkscrew, this amazing piece of equipment that had been brought into the UK, first in the UK, um, and they couldn't get, we, we just couldn't cope with them, there were too many people here. People were like, you know, trying to climb over the fences and, and demanding to be let in, one car left, another one be let in. It was unbelievable, you know, something like six to nine hour queue just for the corkscrew. I mean, the roads were completely blocked from uh, back to dark, back to stoke. The police were ringing up saying they shot the M6, they shot the M1. Um, we got uh, people in caravans that couldn't get in, coaches that couldn't get up the hills. Um, you got, you know, we, we, I think we closed about one o'clock, uh, and with an estimated 40,000 people still outside. I know we, we went up from just under 500,000 people a year coming in during the late 70s to just over a million in 1980. So we, we doubled, more than doubled the numbers of people coming to the park just by putting the corkscrew in. Certainly, uh, that was a major turning point when uh, the corkscrew went in and we became the, really the first British theme park. It brought the uh, leisure industry to the forefront in the UK and actually set the standards, and still does in my opinion, set the standards for um, this type of um, leisure development. Patience, you go over the edge. Starting up, then you get a nice view, and then you go down crazy. It goes all horribly wrong. It gives you butterflies, and you need to scream. My favourite bit has to be the actual loop. We love to it. Yeah, lots you get a bit like that. <laughs> Really fast. Let's go round and round and round and round. The adrenaline buzzes you. It thrills you. Like the old-fashioned roller coaster, it's a bit rough. But it's also great to get the speed. Awesome.